Muzzled Closet by Koji123 Read by The Viridian Ghost Summary He didn't think they would go this far, but they did, and now he didn't know what to do. Other than dis disassociate in the cleaning supply closet he was locked in. His hands are in the muzzle that was forced onto his face, trying to pry it off and uncaring of the harm that he was doing to himself as it digs into his cheeks and makes the blood well up. The twelve-year-old doesn't even know why he was put in there. It's not like the other times where the students would shove him into lockers and cabinets. No, this was a teacher. And he literally did nothing to even provoke it this time. Maybe his existence was the only reason they needed. Or, a fic inspired by other We Hate Aldera fics from one single idea of a teacher muzzling Izuku and shoving him into a closet when they realize a representative from UA is visiting. Izuku was terrified. He didn't know they would go this far, but they did. And now he didn't know what to do other than disassociate in the cleaning supply closet he was locked in. His hands on, were on the muzzle that was forced onto his face, trying to pry it off and uncaring to the harm that he was doing to himself as it digs into his cheeks, making the blood well up underneath it. The twelve-year-old doesn't even know why he was put in there. It's not like the other times where students would shove him into lockers and cabinets. No, this was a teacher who did this and he literally did nothing to even provoke it this time. Maybe his, his existence was the only reason they needed. Kachan wasn't at school to help him either, even if the boy really only ignored him nowadays. He helped keep other students and teachers away from him the best he can. The blonde always acted like he never cared, but definitely showed in the little ways he did. Izuku doesn't blame him for not wanting to interact with the only quirkless kid in the school. Kachan had his own issues to deal with. He didn't need to keep Izuku. He didn't need Izuku to keep him behind. But the point is, Kachan was running late, and he couldn't have stopped the teacher from silencing him w with the terrible contraption that is now locking him in the supply closet. So he sits against the door and waits, tuning out the people outside that would never help him, chest heaving up and down, trying to pull the muzzle off his face without even considering that there might be an easier way to get it off at, in the back. But then, a voice finally gains his attention. Aizawa wanted so badly to hate Nezu for making him do this, and yet he couldn't because now he was pissed off at, the, at this middle school for its mere existence. Students using their quirks illegally in the hallways, obnoxious kids boasting about being heroes already, teachers smiling smugly at the sight of a representative for UA, walking in the halls to see the heroes of the future. But then those same teachers talking shit on each other. And oh, the goddamn principal leading him through the hallways and talking so highly of the students with an outfit that reeked of smoke. This place was crawling with bias and toxicity, and it most certainly didn't was getting shut down by the end of the week. Aizawa is just about to cut off the principal and leave. He's heard more than enough at this point and seen more than enough. His social battery was beyond drained. But then, there's a kid, a blonde to be specific, that enters the school and runs down the hall. Normally, Aizawa would just look away, but because it's just another annoy annoyance of a kid. But the blonde looks into what is most likely his classroom and pauses. Then, he turns slowly to the teacher and speaks. Where the hell is Deku? Aizawa's eyebrows raise, and, he's com and he completely ignores the principal suddenly wanting him to move to another location. He instead takes a step forward and stares down the teacher that hasn't noticed him yet. The woman's full attention is on the blonde, with a face of, face of pure disgust. He is not here today. Something about not feeling well. Take your seat, Bakugo. Aizawa's eyes flicker to the way 
to the way Bakugo tenses. Bullshit. The blonde hisses out, and the teacher's eyes widen, comically large, which makes Aizawa's mouth twitch into a smirk. Excuse me? I said bullshit. That's bullshit. Deku would never miss class. You know he's come to class sick before. Hell, he's even even come to class with a concussion. So where the fuck is he? I know you didn't send him home. Other than the foul language, Aizawa might just like the, this kid. The bluntness and rudeness probably came from the school itself, but at least he wasn't taking anyone's bullshit. The anger issues may be a problem, but that can easily change with help. The tired man wonders if the blonde will attend U- UA. Well, maybe I did send him home. I don't... I don't... I really don't see why you care, Bakugo. You never speak with Deku, anyways. So really, it's none of your business. This is my business. When when you treat him like shit? Now, where the fuck is he? The teacher goes to speak, but then there's an... But then they're interrupted by a thump that comes across from the supply closet far into the classroom. The teacher's eye twitch. Bakugo's eyes widen, and Aizawa's eyebrows furrow in confusion while the principal starts to look nervous. Then, Bakugo turns quickly that the teacher and principal startle. The blonde and tired man lock eyes. You. You're the representative for UA or whatever, right? That was supposed to come today? Bakugo Bakugo questions. And for a kid, those eyes were more than determined than most daylight pros Aizawa has ever seen. His eyes held the urge to protect. Something tells Aizawa that there's going to be a lot of shit he's going to need to fix regarding this Deku and his relationship with Bakugo. But they're going to get to that later. He instead gives the blonde a sharp nod as he continues to ignore the principal, who is now insisting they continue the tour. The blonde is also ignoring the teacher, who is insisting that Bakugo takes a seat. Come with me, Bakugo orders, grabbing the tired man's wrist and dragging him down the hall. To hall. Principal and teacher follow along in an attempt to stop them both. But now, the UA teacher and angry student were on a mission, and they weren't going to be stopped. When they reach a supply closet, there's another thump that comes from inside. Bakugo looks up at Aizawa with a look asking for help, and the tired man turns to the principal, who visibly sweats. Give me the keys for this closet right now, or so help me, I will be sending your ass down the hallway to get them myself. Aizawa threatens, as the principal and the principal is quick to feel his pockets, finding the keys and handing them to Aizawa before retreating down the hall towards his office. The teacher looks back and back and forward between the closet door and his classroom, then decides that teaching was suddenly a better option than getting caught for whatever was behind that door. Oh, Aizawa was going to hate this, wasn't he? Bakugo grabs the keys from him, while Aizawa fumes and unlocks the door like he's done it a thousand times. And yeah, Aizawa is so fucking pissed. Izuku knew he heard a voice, Kachan and another he didn't really recognize, but it was new. As soon as he first heard Kachan's voice, he tries to figure out what to do, and not even after a minute, he bangs his fist against the door. There's silence. Then people are approaching the door. He bangs again against the door, tears now in his eyes. Please, help him. Please, please. The sound of keys. The door opening. He falls down on the floor and looks up with wet eyes at his saviors. Dek, Izuku, hey, hey. Baku crouches down and tugs Izuku into his lap cradling the boy with a grip that's protective. Izuku immediately bursts into tears, chest heaving as he has trouble breathing, 
through the muzzle still on his face, but bloody edges around it. And Izuku wasn't used to this. Kachan actually physically comforting him? It just made him cry harder, and he was having trouble listening to the new voice that was trying to help him. Izuku! Kachan's voice snaps, his hearing back, and he looks at the blonde with a frantic look. Listen to him, okay? Izuku looks at the man that carried the same voice that he want, that wanted to help him, and he finally realizes that he's been tuning him out. So he listens and, Hey, kid, do you mind just following my breathing? Just through the, in through the nose, okay? Not through the mouth. Ready? The tired man questions, and Izuku just gives a barely there nod. But the man sees it nonetheless. Okay. One, two, three, four. Good, good. Five, six. He continues on until Izuku is, is breathing okay. Then lets out a little breath of relief at the sight of the kid finally relaxing. All right, let's get you out of here and that thing off of you, okay? There, There's nothing here that can help me get it off until we'll have to go to my car where I have an emergency kit for this exact purpose. Aizawa talks more than he usually would to the kid as he and Bakugo help him to his feet. And the kid, Aizuku, seems to appreciate it Im- immensely. So I, I know your name is Izuku already. My name is Aizawa. I was here as a UA representative. But That really was just bullshit. The principal of UA was really suspicious about this school for illegal activity, and it seems they were right, huh? Bakugo seems to snort at that. Izuku just looks up at Aizawa with wide eyes as they walk down the hallway. The nerd loves UA. I'm guessing he'd be asking if you're a pro hero right now, but I'll let him ask that when... That fucking shit is off his face. I'm coming with you. I don't want to be here anymore either. Bakugo mumbles, his tone sounding grumpy, grumpy, but his eyes telling telling Aizawa a different story. This school has wronged all of its kids. Hopefully Nezu can get them into a school that will teach them better. I wasn't going to ask you... I wasn't going to ask you to stay, Bakugo. We'll be going to your way to see Recovery Girl, Izuku, after... For you, Izuku. After we get that muzzle off, then you'll... Then you and Bakugo will be taking, talking to a detective and the principal about what happened. The school will be closed down by the end of tomorrow, with everything we have now. Aizawa explains, and goes to open the door to the school exit, but... Izuku grabs his arm sleeve looking at Aizawa with an expression of relief. The tired man gives the boy a questioning glance and blinks in surprise when Izuku wraps his arms around the man and starts shaking, starting to cry again as he stares up at Aizawa. Hey, it's okay, kid, it's okay. Aizawa mumbles, crouching down to be at the kid's level and looks him in the eyes. You're safe now, okay? Aizawa takes the boy's hands away from the hug Instead of letting them clutch, instead letting them clutch the front of his shirt, right near his heart, something Izuku can feel and calm down with. Do you want me to carry you the rest of the way? Hmm. Izuku hesitates, looking down at the ground with a look Aizawa can't read. I can give him a pity piggyback ride. Uh, Bakugo speaks up, and Izuku looks over at the blonde with a shocked look. That works too. How about that, Aizuku? Aizawa asks, gently prying Izuku's hands off his shirt when the boy nods slowly. He helps the fluffy-haired boy onto Bakugo's back, the blonde supporting Izuku the best he can, and it's easier than expected, but Aizawa shouldn't be so surprised. Izuku was much smaller than he should be in this school grade. Okay, let's go. Bakugo, Bakugo grumbles, not com- not commenting on Izuku, 
when the boy lays his head down on his shoulder. He just walks through the door when Aizawa opens it for them. The tired man leads them down the road to his car. Bakugo settles Izuku in the back seat of the car when they, when they reach it. Being surprisingly soft with the boy and running his hand through the messy curls to reassure him every time he starts to look panicked. Okay, this will be quick. Aizawa mumbles a rather, st- a rather strong pair of scissors in his grip as he takes Bakugo's place in front of the boy. I'm just going to tilt your head, okay? Just like that. Yep. You'll feel the scissors against your head, but they won't hurt you, okay? Okay, if the strap was lighter, I wouldn't have to do this, but... <sighs> Aizawa sighs, being very gentle as he... as he grips the strap and uses the scissors to cut it. Izuku flinches when he hears the movement of the tool, but blinks in relief when the tightness of the strap is no longer present. All right, I'm going to take the muzzle off now, okay? Slowly, as not to hurt you. Aizawa very, very gently places a hand on the front of the muzzle, getting a good grip on it before slowly and carefully taking it off. Izuku immediately takes a deep breath in. That makes Aizawa frown. The tired man eyeing eyeing the blood that drips down onto Izuku's pants. Shit, okay. He didn't think the cuts would be this bad, and he didn't expect the muzzle to have something that clamps around the tongue. Fuck, the boy probably tried to pry pry it off himself. That would explain the cuts. The The muzzle isn't exactly smooth on the inside. Okay, okay. Bakugo, can you grab the paper towels and wet wipes from under the front seat for me? Bakugo doesn't hesitate, especially when Izuku seems to start disassociating at the sight of the muzzle in in Aizawa's hand. The man is quick to get rid of it, however, tossing it into the trunk that is still open from when he got the scissors out of it. The small boy just looks off to the side now when Aizawa is cleaning his face and patching him up the best he can with the help of Bakugo, who also got the med kit for him. Aizawa mumbles something. Izuku mumbles something very quietly. What was that? Aizawa questions softly when he is done handling the med kit and handing it back to Bakugo, who takes it and tosses it into the trunk like Aizawa did with the muzzle. I, I, I'm, I'm corkless. Izuku's voice sounds awful. Is that what Aizawa thinks first? And then... Those quirkist motherfuckers. At the goddamn school. Is that what he thinks next? Kid, I I don't care about that. Aizawa sighs, lightly grabbing one of Izuku's hands, squeezing it in a grounding way. I just care about getting you the help you need and making sure you're alright. It's not my... It's not only my job, but it's also something I want to do. Izuku looks like he wants to break down, but he's just tired. So instead, he leans his head forward and bumps it onto Aizawa's chest lightly, making the tired man instinctively wrap his arms around the small boy in a tight hold. Bakugo doesn't comment, instead just closing the trunk Aizawa I- for Aizawa and going around the car to get into the seat on the other side of Izuku. They eventually start moving once Aizawa manages to get Bakugo to hold Izuku's hand so the boy could keep a grip on reality. And the man driving is, well, it's okay, could be better, as Bakugo states clearly as they hit a bump in the road. At least it makes Izuku giggle. Izuku is quiet the entire ride, and his entire and the entire walk to into the school just clutching at both Aizawa and Bakugo's hands and keeping them close to his chest everything goes by in a blur after that soon enough Izuku finds himself sitting on Aizawa's couch freshly abandoned by his mother after she found out what happened and just doodling in a sketchbook quietly a week later he doesn't know what he did wrong to make everyone want to want him to stop existing, so he doesn't think about it. Instead, he just sketches Aizawa, as he knows now, and is now his foster dad. 
the one and only eraser head. His drawing, he's drawing him first, and then he plans to draw Hisashi, his other foster dad, the President Mike. Izuku frowns when a drop of blood drips onto the page in front of him. He sighs in realization that biting that he was biting his lip too hard. He has to stop doing that. He brings his hand up to feel where he had bitten it too hard. Izuku grimaces at the feeling of his scars instead, freshly healed by Recovery Girl, but not going to fade away for a while. You okay, little listener? Hisashi's voice makes Izuku snap his head up and look at the tall blonde for a look at the tall blonde with a blank look, which makes Hisashi's eyes soften in concern. Come with me to the kitchen. Let me clean you up a bit. The we- the weird thing about this all is that Izuku thinks, as he stands and takes the man man's hand, is that Hisashi has similar scars on his own face. They were light lighter, faded with time, but something tells Izuku that they were a lot bigger back then. He had to have been muzzled for his quirk, Izuku thinks, and it's not weird, because he wasn't muzzled for a quirk. No, Izuku was muzzled just because they wanted him to shut up and keep quiet. Part of Izuku thinks that he deserved it, but when he told Hisashi that on, on their way home, he was quick to say that he absolutely did not deserve anything that happened to him, and Izuku thinks that Hisashi didn't deserve it either. He definitely didn't deserve it. He lets Hisashi wipe the blood off his lip and clean the self-inflicted bite wound, while Izuku pretty much stares at Hisashi with curious eyes, not letting the man use both his hands, aka holding one hand at all times because it makes him feel safe. And Hisashi doesn't seem to mind, like, it doesn't seem like he's bothered at it by all, at all. He just works surprisingly well with one hand and smiles softly at the boy. Hmm. Aizawa hums, making making his presence known to the two who look over at him with bright expressions. And Izuku didn't quite smile yet, but they'll get there. Did you bite your lip, kid? The tired man questions, swiping a gentle finger across the boy's eyebrow, making the kid squeak, then nod shyly. Try to be more gentle with yourself, okay? Izuku nods again, knowing that Aizawa was going to be worried about him for a while after he had admitted to trying to pry the muzzle off without any thought to himself and his health, along with his other unintentional, unintentional tendencies to accidentally hurt himself when he gets very emotional. That includes gripping his arm so hard his finger his fingernails digging into his skin, hard enough to draw blood, or, just as he had done a moment earlier, bite his lip. Something he, he'd tug at his, sometimes he'd tug at his hair uh, and ground himself. He's only ever pulled out hair during bad panic attacks. Do you mind if I bring someone by later, Izuku? He's a kid, your age, and the adopted son of a good friend of ours. Aizawa questions in a soft tone, setting, sitting down at the kitchen table and tilting his head, his head at Izuku, who fidgets with Hisashi's hand. That, that, that's okay. Izuku stutter, stutters, grabbing Aizawa's hand when it's offered to him. So now he has two hands to hold and not let go of. He's holding both their hands again later, too, when the doorbell rings and Hisashi has to convince Izuku to let his hand go. The boy pouts at that, but relents, instead leaning into Aizawa on on the couch. The boy was certainly very clingy, but that wasn't a bad thing. The two adults were glad this was the response he had over being skittish around them and afraid of being mistreated for so long. The twelve-year-old boy stares over from where he's on the couch, at Hizashi, op- Hizashi opening the door and blinking when he lets... Oh, that's definitely midnight, and... Wait, 
Midnight adopted a son? Huh, he never thought that would happen. And speaking of son, he locks eyes with the purpled one. The purple ones. Both eyes widening for the same reasoning, focusing on each other's fa face scars. One more recent and one more faded at this point. The purple-haired boy looks, looks away when he realizes he's staring. But Izuku doesn't. He instead stands up off the couch and walks speedily over to the other boy, grabbing his hand and tugging him forward onto the couch. New friend at obtained. This was the only thing is the only thing on Izuku's mind. Now as he drags the boy to sit down, the boy looks dumbfounded, blinking in utter confusion as Izuku holds his hand with bright eyes. Uh I'm Hitoshi, Hitoshi uh, says, and Izuku smiles so widely that it looks like it might hurt his cheeks. I'm, I'm Izuku, Izuku hums, oblivious to the dying midnight at, still at the front door, clutching her chest as she suffers from the pure adorableness in front of her. Hizashi has to drag her in and shut the door for, for her, all while, all while carrying an amused grin. Aizawa just sized sighs, fondly ruffling Izuku's hair, m making the boy look at him. Don't overwhelm each other. You just met, kid. Aizawa mumbles, and Izuku looks sheepish, but not ashamed. I know, but, but he's friend, and, um, material? I, Izuku squeaks, and I don't have a lot of those, and I, um, I want, um, Izuku tries to put it into words, but he just can't, so instead he just looks at Hitoshi who looks back at him with blushing cheeks. I know, little listener, but you have to ask before holding someone who who you don't know knows hand. Hizashi says, sighing, says, though his voice is laced with amusement and fondness. Oh, Izuku sadly goes to release his grip on the purple-haired boy's hand, but then Hitoshi tightens his grip and looks away shyly. It makes Izuku's expression lighten up a little and forms a smile on his face. That's it. I'm dead. You both barely even spoke to each other and you've already killed me. Midnight whines dramatically, making Izuku giggle and Hitoshi huff out a small laugh. Aizawa knows he made a good decision on letting the bo two boys meet. Hitoshi needs some social interaction and Izuku needed a friend who he could relate to. Them being attached at the hip was a little unexpected, but very much welcomed. Bak Bakugo was a little jealous, but he accepted the two boys' friendship with a grumble and a happy Izuku holding his and Hitoshi's hands. Izuku was very lucky, he thinks. Anyways, he's very happy. He's happier than he was before, so this definitely had to be luck. Oh, oh well, no matter what it is, He's in a better situation, and that's all that really matters to him. He could get... He gets to hold anyone's hand all day and gets forehead kisses and warm big hugs. It was really nice. Okay, that is the end of this fic. Uh, sorry for any mistakes or stumbles along the way. Uh, I'm still kind of learning how to do this. Uh, I've never been the best public speaker that's more like just speaking in general. And so that's why I'm trying to do this a tiny bit more. Uh, I took a bit of a break from uploading only because school just started and I'm trying to focus on that. But anyway, this is the Viridian Ghost signing out. See you all, see you all next time.